Uh, so I did a couple of other videos on this configuration, um, which is the configuration I've been playing with, and it's really a mess. But it was it's been to test the uh, the Pika motor and see what kind of results I'm getting on that. But while I have the setup um, here, I wanted to just document uh, the alignment uh, procedure that I I did on this because it seemed to work surprisingly easily and I want to be able to compare this to what it what happens next time so I want to have a video um, <clears throat> that this kind of shows what the alignment looked like this time so I don't you know massively expect this to be if any of these videos to be <laughs> hugely interesting to anyone else but uh, maybe if you're doing the exact same thing um, but this is currently lined uh, I know it's well, the software is saying it's receiving the measurement, it's getting a frequency, it's seeing the reference. Well, it knows the reference from the laser and it's getting a measurement frequency. So when it gets a good measurement frequency, I kind of assume that that means that it's it's reasonably aligned. And I, when I get measurements out, those are good measurements. But um, I would like to confirm that that is the case uh, with Sam, actually. Because he, he knows what he's talking about. There, okay, so I'm blocking the measurement path now. So you can see this is the instance laser. And this is on the big, um, the large uh, settings. It's got the, the laser has this um, aperture at the front. You can ex And you can set it to the small dot or the large dot. Um, and my understanding is it's, you can use the small dot for alignment. And, that, and that's supposed to be a good thing. Um Okay, so I guess it's, it's been useful to have some degree of freedom on the laser um, and some 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 freedom with the mount, but I don't have any uh, a kinematic mount here. I don't have any tilt or anything, but it still seems to align well enough under this configuration. So you can see that's the top the top laser um, that's seeing that's the beam coming out of a laser beam. So you use bits of paper. And you can see this little, if I just block it completely, you'll see one, you can see one dot. Um, you can see this one dot on the on the paper. Okay, and that's because I'm blocking the the, the beam coming out of laser. It's, it's not going to go anywhere. It's not going to reflect back. But if I come in from the bottom, you can see these two dots very close to each other here. Right. And those will disappear when I when I uh, move the piece of paper up, and it will as as I block the the beam coming out of the laser. So these two dots, um, one is the reference beam. I feel like I got a, a small electric shock there. <laughs> um, uh, one is the yeah, one is the reference beam, and one is the measurement beam. So the the laser is coming out here. It's going into the inf interferometer, it's bouncing around, the reference beam bounces around, comes out, and the measurement beam uh, bounces down onto the mirror and comes out. So one of those is the, um, uh, is the reference dot and one of them is the measurement dot. And we can figure out which one is which uh, by blocking the measurement beam. So I get another random piece of paper and just stick it um, you can't really see, but I'm sticking it under. No, let's see if I can tilt down that a little bit. Okay. So you can see the two the two dots here still and then if I stick a piece of paper one of them disappears so it's the lower of those two bots is disappears disappearing so you know that's that's one of the uh, measurement that's a, 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 the, the reflected measurement uh, beam and I feel like that dot got smaller because I moved the mirror. <laughs> okay, so the mirror obviously has to be under the under the beam. So I've got those two 
uh, dots. And if I move this around, if I move the interferometer around, um, both the reference dot and the measurement measurement dot will kind of move. And then I can just get them kind of on, you know, I can move the, uh, the interferometer so they're kind of on top of each other. And I've also got some freedom in the laser. I can move a laser so that they're kind of on top of each other. Um, yeah, and in this system, that's about it. So that's, you know, that's all, all I need to do is get those dots basically on top of each other. Now, um, they're not very, they're not very nicely on top of each other. You can see, you can still see that they're overlapping, um, but they're by no means perfectly overlapped. Um, but if I look over the computer, I am getting a measurement signal, um, and I believe if I if I reset that, that will still be fine. But even so, um, you know, I can once I've got them aligned with the small aperture, um, I'm then on the laser going to move to the larger aperture, and then you get much more of an overlap because the beam is bigger anyway. And then that gives you a much stabler, um, a stabler system, and it, you know you don't lose, you don't use the uh, uh, measurement signal anymore. So that was it. I just wanted to document that, um, so that next time I come to to try and do an alignment, uh, I can at least kind of compare it to this. I'm not by any means certain that this is correct. I'm new to using interferometer interferometers. Um, but it does. It seems to work, and I, I do seem to get measurements that are um, what I expect to see. So there we go.